Tim Duenas here for uh, Hairbrain, doing a little Hairbrain live takeover for Facebook uh, in partnership with R & Co. So I'm pretty excited to do this as I have a lot of love for both uh, R & Co and Hairbrain. Uh, Hairbrain has supported me very much through my career and uh, it's been really fun and R & Co and I have had a nice new partnership and that's also been very enjoyable. Uh, what we're going to be working on today is a modern mullet. We are going to see how do we bridge the gap between being like too edgy and being salon wearable. I work with salon clients every day. Uh, I'm here in Los Angeles, California. I work in West Hollywood. I own a salon in West Hollywood and, um, and also an academy. So what I try to do and what I try to bring to my clients as well as my students is wearable hair, cool hair, and making sure that everybody just feels their best. So that's what I'm going to bring to you today is a very cool, uh, expensive rock and roll, as I always say. All right, so let's just run through the sectioning before I even get started. I pre-sectioned my uh, pivot point haircut here. This is a jo Josephine. Through the back here, I've sectioned just above the ear, and then I dropped just at the corner by the round right here. And then I've kind of come up and around over the base of the crown and continued the same on the other side. I've also come up around the crown here. So it's nice and round, divided it in half so I can work on that and make that easier for me to balance. And then I've sectioned off each side just from top of the ear to just behind the ear, top of the ear to just behind the ear. And the reason why I took a diagonal is to make it uh, easier for me to work with um, when I'm Cutting and it gives it a nicer blend. If I took this all in one, when I'm starting to work my disconnection, it'll be too harsh of a line. So if you section and you set a little bit of a zigzag parting, you're gonna end up with a much better um, dis diffusion of your disconnection. I'm gonna be working with my Feather Plie Straight Blade Razor. Uh, this is my tool of choice. It's something that I love very much, something I've worked with uh, for my a lot of my career, I'd say maybe 15 years of my career, I've been doing it for 20, so that's fun. And then I'm going to be using my leader comb here, uh, another one of my favorites. All right, let's cut some hair. I'm gonna start in the front with my fringe section. There we go here, boom. All right, let's start in the front. Start in the front with my fringe section. Here, I'm going to start on, this would be if I'm facing it as my left side, my client's right hand side. Clip this other section out of the way here. And we're going to be working a shape that's going to fall round. I want it to fall roughly, roughly about to the sideburn area. And I want it to fall round. So that means that my weight is going to be falling from the front to the back. I'm going to work with the flat of my blade, which means my razor is not going to come across the hair this way. It's going to come flat. That's going to give me maximum texture. I'm looking for a very maximized texture haircut here. Uh, I want it to feel very rock and roll, but it's still controlled, so that's important. We're going to take a diagonal back section. A diagonal back section. Out of the way there. this down and I'll get to all your questions uh, towards the end of this um, working with a tripod so here we go we're gonna start bridge of the nose and actually we're, we're gonna start top of the nose out to that corner there top of the nose here let's turn here. Right. here it comes down at natural We're going to work here. Remember where we're aiming. Small strokes. Right to the corner. So just starting to create that line on what I would like to see. Uh, to create balance, I'm going to go ahead and do the same section on this side. If you work side for side, it gives you a much easier balance of your haircut and your shape. So here. Fall, start from the same where it lives here. It's gonna work. Flat of the blade, small strokes, and the flat of the blade will give me that 
shape I'm looking for. Okay, check my balance, comes to the same. All right, so now we'll move on to the next here. Diagonal back section. So when I say diagonal back, what I mean is I'm following the direction of my hairline. See here, I'm following the direction of my hairline back. Get out of the way. Okay. Using my underlying as my guide. So I look to this and I look and I see my guide lays here. And I'm going to work my hair the same as I did before. Right down. So you see that I'm starting to create this shape here. So if you're just joining us, I'm doing an airbrain takeover with R and Co. and Airbrain, and I am working a modern mullet with my straight blade razor. So again, we're going to start on the side here. We're just working balance. We're using our underneath as a guide, working into the sideburn. We're using medium strokes with our razor and the flat of the blade. So I'm starting to see that fringe take shape here and really carve out what I want. I check my balance in the middle, make sure I'm close. I don't necessarily think it has to be exact, it just has to be similar. It gives it some character if it's just slightly off, but I, I do you know, work pretty precise on the most, most circuit. So again, we're going to work here. Part of my body position. Maybe I'll move here. Just want you guys to be able to see. Work here and across. So again, a little bit of a heavier stroke, creating clean line with some some texture. Okay, let's move here. We're going to work diagonal. Here. So we're just following that shape again. We're working down and through to the sideburn here. So this is going to give us a really cool kind of bowl vibe in the front, which is something I'm really digging. Think uh, Jane Fonda mullet, you know what I mean? Like something that's elegant and something that wears cool, but like has cool history as well. All right, so this is my final section on this side. I comb from where the hair lives, so I'm not combing to the center. The hair lives over here, if I look at the root direction. So I comb to where the hair lives. Elevation is still low, keeping the same stroke, edge of the blade. So when I say stroke, that's the up and down of my razor. So here. Come, come, make sure I'm organized and I'm coming right to the sideburn area here. So now I've kind of established that fringe on that side. I'm going to move to the other side. All this hair comes here. Again, where it lives. I work right through the flat of the blade following the underneath hair as a guide, where that hair lives. Maybe a little tangle. Okay. All right, so then we'll start on this side here. Now that we've established that fringe section, I'm going to just get that last little bit that was tucked behind the clip. Okay. We've established our fringe. Now I'm going to work on this sideburn piece. And this is something that is up to you to customize. For me, I really want to see a nice carve out around the face here. So I'm going to work this panel as a pretty severe disconnection from the rest of the haircut. This is what's going to Towards the back. 
So that'll make it so it's shorter in the front, longer in the back. We're gonna really carve this out here. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna work with wide strokes here. Flat of the blade. I kind of let the hair lay, and then I'm gonna come right down and through and really just loosely create what I want around the face. This is gonna give me that very airy vibe right up on the hairline here. Back. Sections, as far as density goes, you wanna just work with what you can see. So if you can see your guide through it, then you can work to it, and that's the right amount of density that you should work with. All right, so we're gonna go here. Here again, natural fall, working from the hairline. Natural fall, I'm starting right above it. I look in, and the beauty of the razor is I can really just kind of create the softness. And if I want the section to be slightly longer than the one below, I can. Uh, in this case, I'm kind of working right to it. This is the movement now, I'm starting to the back. My head is slightly tilted back. That's allowing it to lay a little leaner on the face, especially with these mannequins. They have a lot of jump, which means uh, the hair has a tendency to um, lift up off the scalp more than it would on a person. So I'm just going to clip this out of the way so I don't comb into my underneath section. Remaining organized, especially doing disconnection, it's really important to keep hair clipped out of the way that you're not working on. So the next section, again, natural fall, silver directed to the front. I'm utilizing my blade and the movement of my blade to remove that length rather than the elevation. So you're starting to see that roundness build, uh, especially since everything's over directed to the front. But because I am opening that blade up further, meaning my stroke is larger, I'm able to remove more weight as I move back. All right, so we move here. Diagonal section back. Put this out of the way. Do we have any questions? Uh, we do. What razor are you using from I, Jan Geddes? I am using a feather plie razor. This was purchased on Hairbrained. Uh, it is a limited edition wooden handle razor, but it is a feather uh, plie straight blade razor. Uh, it just has a different handle on it. There we go. You can see that start to really set in. Now we're going to work the following section back here. So I'm just following the same line that I did before. So the same line as my initial section, I'm just progressively going back further. Everything is over directed to the initial section and following that initial guide that I set in when I first started. So this bottom ends up being over directed into this line here. So it increases my length towards the back there. Really starts to open her up a bit. I can take questions now, so if you guys have Perfect. them. Perfect. We have some comments. Ricardo and Angela Santiago say, what's up, buddy? Loving all the videos you and Tabitha have been doing. Thank you, thank you. Uh, your brother, Michael Duenas. Tim, you are too good. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <clears throat> to use that kind of razor, do you need your barbering license from... Uh, Patience, Mackenzie? No, because we do not use it on the skin. If I was shaving on the skin, then yes, but uh, because we're not using it on the skin, uh, you can use it uh, on the hair. It does come with a removal guard, so if you feel that you're not quite ready to go full guardless, um, come in and use a guard with it. There we go. So this is almost finished here. Uh, one person asked what you were doing. So we are doing a recap. I'll recap what we're doing. We are doing a modern mullet. So right now I'm working the side panel here. We've worked it short to long. Tap if you want to come in quick and mm -hmm. show this. So you can see this shape here. It's short to long out here because everything has been over directed forward here. We're increasing our stroke as we move back so I can create this nice soft 
effect and it works almost as if I've been layering back. So I'm removing more weight as I move back even though I'm keeping it all here. We have worked the fringe low and heavy round into the sideburn area here. We have done the, the initial side here and then I will start on the other side, um, so her right side. We will be then working into the crown section here and creating our disconnect. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is work the underneath here first and then I'm going to work the crown section after that. So a modern mullet, I think rock, rock and roll wearability. Um, I always say, and I say this to all my clients, this is in all my classes, I like to do expensive hair. So it doesn't necessarily mean that I charge a lot. It means that I like the hair that I do to look expensive. So when my client goes out, I want people to be like, damn, that looks like an expensive haircut. So I really try to think, how can I achieve that? And to achieve that, I look to icons. I look to people that have done really good things um, before or shapes that I like. So this is loosely based off of uh, a Jane Fonda haircut in the 1970s. And it's, it's one that I, I love and I've done on a few clients. Um, and really foresee this mullet shape kind of coming in. And you could take this more or less extreme. So this is definitely the more extreme version, um, but you can do it less extreme if you want. So this is gonna be our initial section here. Break. Diagonal back sections, mirroring the hairline here. So just following that hairline. I click this out of the way so that we don't comb it. Okay. And we're gonna take this pretty short on the hairline here. We have a funny comment. Um, Ronica Daru says, it's killing me to see long hair mannequin getting cut so short, LOL. A great oh tutorial God. video. <laughs> so true, right? I mean, we've been, like, if anybody has followed uh, my wife Tabitha and I, um, we've been doing this thing called Quarantine Academy. And what we've been doing is using one mannequin and doing as much as we possibly can on that <laughs> mannequin and then starting on the next mannequin. Right. So... Going directly to short from a long mannequin, yeah, dude, same. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with the support of um, R and Cohen Hair Brand, I'm lucky to have this mannequin and not have to stress about it as much. Uh, Get to have wonderful. fun, do what you want. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Live a little. Okay. So following that, over directing to the front, everything is kind of brought at actual fall, which means I'm not over directing the top section. I'm letting it live where it is. It's not until I get the further back. That, that sectioning starts to be over directed so you can see the bottom is over directed but the top is not so again really opening this up i think this is a good place to answer um yeah neha she's visiting us here from india which is so cool hello hello yeah we Welcome have people from india. all over the world in here right now yeah it's that hair brain life right there um, Welcome, and guys. she was asking why are you using scissor rather than razor uh, you mean razor rather than scissor? Oh, excuse me. Uh, Why are you not using? Sorry about that. So, uh, it's a personal preference. You could do this with a scissor, and if I was doing this with a scissor, I would be cutting. Let me show you. If I was working with a scissor, uh, and I would say I was doing clean line, I would be over directing forward. I would perhaps be elevating a little higher here, like this, and then I'd be working with the points of my shears down and through. The reason I'm using the razor is because I'm able to manipulate the density as well as the shape at the exact same time. It gives me a lot of creativity um, control. It's also a tool that I feel very comfortable and confident with in creating what I'm trying to create, what I see in my head. Uh, but you can very, very, very well use the scissor to do this. Great. So again, we're starting here, following our guide from underneath. Large strokes. Really just bringing that bottom forward to create that line. There we go. Really getting that push back. It's, it's up to you. I mean, I, I'm classically trained with a scissor um, and I just fall in love with the razor and what it can do. And, and at this point in my career, it's what I love. And, and that's not to say that I won't be doing scissor cuts <laughs> again. Uh, it's just kind of an evolution, I guess. Seeing what you want to do and being able to create the freedom of what we do is there's so many tools to achieve whatever we want, right? I do feel like you can achieve the texture you're after a lot faster with the razor. Yeah, I would be. I would end up having to come back through dry, do some pointing. Um, this I'm able to just aim my blade, and then the other thing is I can whittle away stubborn hairlines and things with the razor a little bit easier than a scissor. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we have people from New York, Lincoln, Nebraska. Hi, everybody. Um, can you show the crown media. sectioning before you start it? I of missed course. The sectioning in the beginning. Of course. Yeah, I'll run through my sectioning again, guys, if before you're just joining you get us. To that point. Yeah, this is a modern mullet. Um, so I, I, I made a lot of sections, but they're very simple sections. So I'll run through that. So again, we're just directing everything to the f first section, large strokes, working with the flat of my blade, which gives me maximum texture of that line. And the large strokes are in lieu of me not over directing. So the larger stroke I have, the more weight I am removing from that line and more density I'm removing from the internal texture. So if you can see there, it's got maximum texture on the ends, but mm -hmm. still has a very clean line right there. Yeah. It starts to move back into that shape back there. Uh, Carolyn at Johnson asked, does your wife do hair also? She does. <laughs> that's uh, me. That's the one filming. <laughs> if you guys uh, want to check out on Instagram, it's at hair by Tabitha. And my handle is at Tim Duenas hair. Uh, and again, we've been doing a thing called Quarantine Academy, and it's really fun. Um, right now, we're working. This is uh, me working with r and Co., been really cool to sponsor this send me a mannequin and and support uh creative artists through this time um and then also with uh with hairbrain who is always supporting everybody and i'm very very grateful and thankful to have this opportunity to work with such you know such legends in our industry all right so now i've established that short panel on the side we will comb our fringe down and let's see how all this lives together. So my fringe now, you can see, although it's heavy, it lays right into that sideburn and pushes that weight back in really nicely there. Cool. And then let's look at the other side here and I'll flip it around. How do you persuade clients that believe the razor is bad for their hair? Oh, so I have a funny little anecdote that I do. So if they say it's bad for my hair, I say, okay, cool. And then I'll just set the razor down and I won't use it on them. By doing that, I said it where they can kind of see it. By doing that, they'll go, but wait, what if I want to use the razor? I'll say next time we can use the razor. you got to just remove the razor is bad from their vocabulary. I say that the razor isn't bad. It's maybe just not enough um, knowledge base on, uh, on using the razor. So I, I wouldn't say the razor is bad, and, and I wouldn't let the client per perpetuate any stereotypes uh, that I don't feel are right, but I'm not going to be a brat about it. Just coming back and removing a little bit of weight right here. And then Lyndon uh, Hutman, does the width of the section denote degree of elevation? Uh, so the width of the section denote degree of elevation. Um, not necessarily the width of the section I, I'm taking it mean here. So if I section this up higher, so if you look here, I'm right on the round of the head. I can see this shape is jumping out here and it's getting round. I'm just kind of above that round of the head. Um, that means that I'm going to have a little bit of a leaner shape. If I wanted this to be a heavier shape, I would have dropped that a little bit lower. So hopefully that answers your question. All right, so here's my crown section you guys want to see. Let me just reclip this really fast. How long does it take you to do a good haircut? In the salon, to, to do the haircut itself, it's about 10 to 15 minutes, um, depending, sometimes 20. Uh, but the I book an hour because I have a finish and a style that I do afterwards. Yeah. We have people here from Washington, Canada, Dallas, Wisconsin. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right. Ready? You ready to see what this does, what it is? All right. So here's the crown sectioning. I've gone down the center. I've sectioned just about the base of the crown, just slightly above it. Um, sometimes I find that if I section right at the base of the crown, that I have a strong disconnect. If I go just above, then I'm able to control the jump through here, and I'm able to create the profile that I want to create. Um, also, you've noticed that I've arched up rather than down. That's going to help me marry my disconnection section below in with the crown. And that's the same reason that I've gone through and created a zigzag on the disconnection between the front, back, and top. Again, if you create a zigzag or you create a section that's not too harsh, it's going to create a more uh, delicate visual blend between your shapes. Yeah, kind of interlocks it. Exactly. Can you do this cut with curly hair, Tracy you Elliott? Can. Yeah, you could definitely do this with curly hair. Uh, what I would change, I would keep my ends would be a lot sharper or a lot stronger 
uh, in order for curly hair to live and be happy, a clean end is gonna make it live a lot better together. I would maybe keep a little bit of length on the sides, or it might even be cool to really carve out the temple and leave some tendrils around the face, might be really cool. Mm. This would be an epic curly hair fringe because you can see the really nice buildup of weight there. This is very heavy, uh, even though it has texture, so it, it would be really cool and full there, so. Awesome. Let's go through the back. On the back, I mean, when I'm working with these kind of shapes, I like my layering to determine my, my length. So I'm gonna set this up and cut the length. And because I have a mannequin, I'm kinda gonna leave it a little extreme. Cause yeah. I have it. Um, and she's not going to complain. Uh, I'm going to use my technique to determine my length and then I will come back and do uh, adjust from there. Tracy Marks asks, is the razor guard facing you? I do not have a guard on this razor. Um, if I did have a guard on this razor, I always make sure that the guard would be facing me and not the hair, right? So if the guard was clipped on here, it would be on this side, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm right-handed, so that the full razor can still make contact with the hair. That's why this is great to be used with a guard instead of um, the, the guarded blades themselves have a guard on both sides, whereas the guard that slips over the plie allows you to work still with most of the razor blade itself. So let's start in the center back here. I'm going to tilt Josephine slightly forward. Center back section. Mm -hmm. Hi from England. Hello from England. It's supposed to be late over there, guys. Thank you for watching. Sarah Gandor, is the razor good for curly hair? And hi from Vancouver. Hi from Vancouver. And yes, you can use the razor on curly hair. I would recommend using a sharper blade depending on the texture of the the hair. So if it's like coarse, I would definitely go a sharp blade um, to ensure that I have the cleanest cut possible. And if it is really dense, definitely uh, a sharp blade. You want to remember you want to keep your, your strokes a little bit smaller and work more with the edge to keep the cleanest line. All right, so now we're going to work in the back here. I'm going to work a short to long extending out into my length. I want to make sure that this doesn't get cut too short because I don't want to flatten it out. However, I don't want to cut it in kind of no man's land here, so I can see that arch and there's kind of like a weird shape and it would scoop down. So let's kind of make it lean out and follow the head shape. So I'm going to make sure that this layer falls roughly about my occipital bone. So it's going to leave some crown length and then into my perimeter here. So again, we're going to make sure that top layer falls roughly into the occipital bone. Start here edge of the blade and we're going to extend this out. So both hands are moving, the razor blade and my guide here. We'll drop that. We'll take the block off that. Okay, we're going to spend that. See, it's a little bit long. Oh, no, it's good. It's good. Just a little bit more. Let's just go. Simone Jones says, looking great. Love how you're building weight but giving texture. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. If you watch any of my videos or anything that I do, I always love the juxtaposition of texture and shape. I think it's really cool. I think that one of the most beautiful things about a razor is I can disconnect and still connect. Um, meaning like underneath shapes, I have like a, a pixie video that I did um, or French Bob video that I did and I, and I pushed my graduation towards the face. However, I increased the amount of stroke underneath so that it got lighter underneath and then I dropped different so it gives a push differently um, in each section. All right, so here we go. We're using our same guide. My head is slightly tilted forward, so I know that I'm gonna elevate just a little bit higher. Guide from underneath, from the previous section. Blade is cutting through. Devon is enjoying the cut from Ireland. Thank you. Carol Lynette is saying hi from Virginia. Awesome. Switch sides on the way we're cutting. I just want to marry those two together. But now we're going to cut on the up side so we don't cut into our guide. And we're going to be working towards the ear. Everything is going to be at this point um, square. So I'm just cutting it right where it lives, uh, slightly over directed to center. But as I move around, I'm going to start following the head shape uh, to give it a little bit more of a round shape. So I'm also extending my line. So that means that. I'm coming out towards where I want my perimeter to be. Really like kind of a maximum weight removal here. And there's my perimeter, you can see it. 
so I'm starting to watch it. And this would be cool with wavy hair. Because I'm living around the occipital bone, it's not going to jump too short in the crown, and it's not going to hang kind of awkward. It's going to live with a really nice lean profile, but sit in a little bit around the bone, occipital bone. <laughs> Lots of hair. Uh, Don Official wants you to uh, let us know who you are again. Uh, all right. I'm uh, Tim Duenas Hair. I'm a, a salon owner in Los Angeles, California. Um, I have been doing hair for about 20 years, working with the razor predominantly for, I would say, the last 15 plus. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, right now, I'm doing this in partnership with r and Co. and Hair Brand. Awesome. Doing a modern mullet? Modern mullet. Yeah, so right now I'm just falling shit through. So this is a modern mullet. I like to say I like to do uh, expensive rock and roll hair. So this is my expensive rock and roll mullet. <laughs> Following around here. So now my, sh my section is following the head. And I'm going to start to walk around my head shape here. This is how if you want to get in. I'm going to walk around my head shape. So I'm just standing square. And then as I reach the corner of the head, I'm going to take a step to my right. This is going to influence where I am and where I'm living and how my shape is going to live round versus square. So think about this as round from the back and that was round from the front. Katie Foss is asking, could you achieve the back layering with slide cutting your shears? You could achieve the back with slide cutting with the shears. You would do a kinetic motion. I can show you what that would look like. Um, you would again, like before, like before, you would have to come back in and point cut after you're finished. I can show you what that will look like. So let's say if I have my scissors, here, these are my sliders, they do a nice push. I would have to stand uh, over my mannequin here. So I would be here, so it would be coming from top down, come into my guide, okay? And I would take my scissor, I would come behind, and I would just go behind like this, all the way out. So the same motion, my blade is going open, close just a little bit there as I go down through the hair. So the same motion with the hands, just a different motion with the tool. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's very important to be well versed in every tool that you're going to use. Um, I pride myself on being traditionally trained with the scissor and, and also applying those classic techniques to my razor. Also, you'll notice that I'm working as the hair dries. I know how far I can push this razor in the hair to make sure that it's not too dry or too wet. All right, so I'm walking around, I took another step, following, I'm looking at the guide. So the guide, because it's come around here, has changed, right? It's gotten slightly longer because it's now dropping from the high point of the head down to the low point. So whereas before I was using this as the guide, now I'm using this as the guide. So th this starting point of where that layering was, that's now where I'm living with my layering. So one of the questions Tammy just wrote is, are you using a stationary guide following the round of the head? Can you show partings for next section? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. So I am using, uh, I'm actually using like a mobile guide. So the guide started in the center here, right? And that guide traveled, it was to itself, to itself. Then once I started, the head started rounding away, I started following that guide. So, so the guide came from here, and you can see as that section dropped, it starts to extend and it starts to get longer because that hair exists lower. Okay, so I'll show you the parting here. We're getting close on this. Mm -hmm. so this will be my final parting here. It is my corner section. Let's tilt her away this way. We'll kind of marry this. So what I do is I comb and whatever reaches into the previous cut section, right? I'm not trying to comb all the way back and over direct but I'm just picking up what reaches. One beautiful thing with the razor is you can fluidly melt your guides together. So I pick that up, make sure it's not going too far, let stuff drop away if it doesn't reach, and then I work right through that length there. There we go. All right, so now you can see that back section Really a lot of texture, really starting to expand up there. Really nice. I wish I had, but... All right. I wanted a little bit of a... Moisture. Moisture. All right, so we're going to work through here. 
So I sprayed um, that down and I'm going to work through the other side following from that center guide all the way around. Uh, <clears throat> Eugenia, I think, Karpova, mm -hmm. asks what salon do you own? So uh, I am kind of in a partnership. I'm in a partnership with my wife and another friend of mine uh, on a salon called Ceremony LA. We are yet to open because we're in a global pandemic right now. Um, so we will be opening as soon as we possibly can. Uh, as of now, we are operating, doing fun education things. Um, but it's called Ceremony LA. It's in West Hollywood, California. It's off of Santa Monica Boulevard. It's in the heart of West Hollywood, the cool central of Los Angeles, which is where I live. And uh, it's exciting and scary <laughs> all at the same time, clearly. All right, we're going to work through here. A lot of people can't wait to see the finished look. Me too. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's already looking cool. I'm going to follow that gap underneath. You can see through. So with the razor, what I'm looking for is my guide from the other side, right? So I, I look to see darkness. And it's hard to see on the camera, but you really look to see where the dark is from the other side. So mm -hmm. it looks, your guide looks darker when it sticks to the, the section. So this section, again, is just vertical section straight down from the top section there. There we go. Nice vertical mm -hmm. section. And what we do, uh, my wife and I have been doing this thing called Quarantine Academy, where we've been working with mannequins and creating uh, essential looks that we believe are cool and that we believe are functional. Um, and we use one mannequin and we go all the way down to the short. So we just finished a series um, and I finished up with my crop, uh, a nice little pixie. And uh, that's available on my Instagram at Tim Duenas Hair. And you can check that out and watch it and see what's going on with it and you know what kind of my vibe is and her vibe too uh, as well. Uh, Johnny Argue asks, how do you feel about condensed hair cutting with a razor, bigger sections? So, I mean, I've done it and it's fun. It, with all condensed hair cutting whatsoever, I believe that once you know the rules, you can break the rules, right? And condensed hair cutting is really cool. It has a place and a time. Um, and I think that it works as long as your blade is very sharp and you understand what you're doing and you can get through your section. The problem is if you can't get through the section, like a scissor mows through a section very well, has two blades, whereas a razor might start to chomp up that hair. So there's a time and a place for it, and I've done it, and I love it, but it's not always the go-to. And um, then we have, let's see, are you over-directing sides towards center? So uh, in the initial, yes, but as soon as I reach this round of the head, I start to follow it. So what that's doing is creating a little bit of a flat back here, which is going to lean my shape out, and then it's going to start to round to create some fluidity around the head so as I'm cutting I'm starting to walk around I've been moving the mannequin so you guys can keep consistent view I'm moving the mannequin around so we can see this here so now this section here will be living where it lives from the head and then Katie Foss asks where can we find the quarantine education uh, you can find uh, quarantine Academy on my Instagram at Tim Duenas hair or you can find it on my wife's Instagram, Hair by Tabitha. Um, Eugenia Karpova is so sweet. Thank you for your answer. Congratulations and all the best of luck. You are going to succeed for sure. Oh, thank you so very much. Now we're moving, working here. We're standing on the side here. And there's also a ton of education guides available on Hairbrain. Right now they have really cool um, offers going, free haircuts, seminars and such. They had Jay Mood doing some men's haircuts. They have color seminars up there, so free classes for their HB Live. And as well, R Co just did a really cool thing with uh, Support Creatives, Adam Federico, uh, Pony Education, and Ivana Spencer from, uh, Spi uh, like Spicer from Zagat in Croatia. So if you guys missed that, head on over to R Co's uh, Facebook and you can see that as well. So everybody's really jumping in and joining the cause and giving away, and I think it's tremendous. Uh, that everybody's kind of pulling in on this, you know, it gives us an unprecedented, unprecedented amount of education. Here we go, right through that bottom. So now we've completed both sides. Check our balance here. Looking good. So when we look from the top down, we're going to see this. This shape has evolved from being 
long in the center, short in the center, and see it starts to kind of extend, extend, and then it wraps around because it, it's longer here because this point is shorter here in the center, and this point is longer because it's lower, right? So this is a lower spot on the head. This is a higher spot on the head. So my guide comes from where that lives. So this is an entity all of its own. Here, let me wrap around so you can see this. So, so my guide here is the same length as here. So here and here are the same. This is the short on the crown, and that's going to be the marriage to all that length in there. So see all that texture? Kind of, you can see that little tail, which I kind of really love. Mm-hmm, I do too. All right, so you can see all that texture building up in there. Uh, Robin String is asking where you get your mannequin heads from. Pivot Point. This is a Pivot Point Josephine mannequin. They are my mannequins of choice. Uh, they would have been what I've been using for the majority of my career and my education career, so I love Pivot Point mannequins. They're really awesome. All right, there we go. See that bowl starting to build up that weight? See the disconnection here? A really long mullet falling through, which is really cool. And now we're going to work on our top section. So we have some choices here. Let's see the sectioning again. Yes, of course. So the section again is just above the crown here. So if you see that the crown section would fall here, I look just above to kind of create a marriage between my disconnected panels. Um, and then I worked down to a little bit below the round here. So I'll have a little bit of weight that'll fill in this corner. And then I worked above the round here to keep it nice and light and lean. So a cool thing too. This length here and this length here should match up pretty close, right? And that's just the way that the, the weight falls. So I followed the weight line around the head. That's cool. So this length is the same as this length, right, on where it falls. And it's because I've set that round shape in. And that's just playing with balance and stuff. And that's one thing that's really cool um, that you can do with hair cutting is just manipulate densities. All right, so we're going to work on this side here. We have some choices. We can cut from the front back, or we can cut from the back forward. We can cut vertically this way, or we can cut horizontally this way, um, depending on how you've been taught. So I'm going to work across the head. I'm going to work from the center back here, creating uh, a nice loose shape on top. Okay, so we're kind of backwards from the center. Actually, let's work from the bottom up. I'm so sorry. We're going to work from the bottom up. Karen Bergamaski says, I can watch your education all day. You're so patient with questions and cut quick, too. Well, thank you. That's really complimentary. <laughs> yeah. Especially with so much going on right now. Uh, Veronica DeRue says, you can see where that texture would look great on curly hair for sure. Expands so nicely. All right. So I changed my mind 20 times. We're going to go center, front, back, diagonal towards the bottom, creating that nice round vibe that we had before. Eugenia Karpova says it looks great. Uh, Jennifer Holashak wants to know what razor you are using. This is a feather plie razor. Uh, it's a straight blade razor, um, and this is a wooden handle limited edition. You can still get a different wooden handle from Hairbrain Pro. Uh, this is the one that I've used for years. I also have a couple regular as well. All right, so we want to really remove some weight, but I want to keep that round shape. So what I'm going to do is disregard this underneath section here, I'm going to utilize this as my guide. So this point on the fringe that coincides with where my section interlocks here, that's going to be my guide. It's going to give me some disconnection from underneath. I'm going to hold horizontal, so just kind of flat from where the head, right there. I'm going to use that guide underneath. You can see that there. Can you see that? See how that guide yeah. starts? Stay right there for a second. Mm -hmm. I just want to show elevation for everybody. Yeah, there you go. So it's like 45 off the head. Okay. We're going to work a loose blade. So my blade is a little bit lighter there. I'm working what I like to call three quarters. So my blade isn't 100% flat, and I'll show you as I come around on my next section. My blade is not 100% flat here, right? So my blade is not flat on the head as it was in the beginning. It's here. So the wonderful thing about the razor is all this variation that I have. I can come in on the edge and create a clean line, like I said, for curly. But we're going to work on a three-quarter, and I'm just going to follow my shape around into the back here. And let's pick up that crown section here, or that point, and let's kind of connect the dots there. So let's connect the dots. 
out. Do you know of another um, pivot point gal mannequin name that you like? Second best to Josephine? Uh, Erica. Okay. So, um, Eugenia Karpova said that they were out of stock. She checked a few days ago. I think of the... Point. Yeah, they've been, <clears throat> stocks have been a little bit low over there uh, because everybody's doing exactly what we're doing. Right. Um, but I would say the Erica is a really great um, second runner up. It has a little bit of a different density um, and a little bit of less length, but it's still a wonderful mannequin. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're pivoting, right? So this section originally was here, now it's here. So I'm slight, I'm following the round here. I've moved up and I'm slightly pivoting towards the back. When I end, I'm gonna end up completely vertical this way. So slow move and pivot using the same guide from underneath, pushing it forward. Uh, she meant the razor. Sorry, go. Oh, the razor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the feather plie is the razor of choice for me. No matter what handle you choose, it's mm -hmm. the one you can, you can hit those up. So there we go. Elevation now, if you want to show the elevation, it's mm -hmm. higher to remove a little bit more weight. And because I'm at a higher point on the head, so because the head is rounding up, I'm trying to keep the elevation at the same. So now as I've come here, the head's a little lower, so I could drop my elevation. Three quarter of the blade, following on through, picking up right into my disconnection here. So really opening that up and I have this little waterfall in there. So again, this is a very aggressive version of a modern mullet. But it's kind of like a bull mullet, you know? So it's got a bull cut that lives on top of this mullet, but not too heavy, only heavy in the front, which will keep it very modern. Tilt the head, pivoted section, more elevation, follow guide from underneath. Three quarter blade, it's okay that stuff drops away. I know where my guide is, or comb again. Whatever picks up is what needs to live with it. Right, follow that head shape around. And the razor, again, very fluid tool. The guide jumps up. Maria yeah, Rosario again. says, is this the haircut that makes someone want to date you? It's kind of funny. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it um, should be, a, a, think of like, you know, it, it, the inspiration for this one comes from a couple of different places. Um, in the 70s, you know, Jane Fonda had something very similar. And then in like the early 2000s, in Spain, they were rocking a really cool mullet similar to this, and I was always driven to that shape and thought it was a very cool, sexy shape. Um, so I've kind of mimicked it in my vibe. So I hope so. I mean, I think it's yeah. Cool. Uh, Mandy Glenn is loving it and watching it from Ireland. Debbie Russell says this is looking badass with dollar signs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's work this other side here. So recap: we kept it low elevation, and if you want to know where to elevate, put your comb on the head. Hold we'll Wherever the comb lives, okay. that's where your elevation is going to be. So as I move up, you can see that comb elevation changes, right? And that's how I determined where this was going to go. So if we calm this down and we look at this, it's created this bit of graduation. But you can see because my stroke started opening, weird. It's like layered off of there. That's crazy, right? So layered off of my stroke, but without the elevation, which helps me maintain a bit more weight, but remove it at the same exact time. Hence the reason I love my razor. Okay. So at this point, if I'm working on a client, I would work a little bit of product in as it dries. Something like Arn Co's Waterfall would be really awesome. It's nice and lightweight and it gives me that control. A lot of times I like to work product in as I'm going. So that's really, really great. So we're gonna work a diagonal section again, starting from that center parting just slightly off. So center parting, I'm gonna go just at the round of the head, following diagonal back. Okay, so just a little less steep than that. There we go. And we're gonna cook this out of our way. What's your favorite hair dryer to use? Right now, I'm using a Parlux, and I love it, and it's been really awesome. I forgot what the model is. It's the newest one, Avalon or something like that. 
Uh, you can get that, I believe, on Hairbrained, or you can get it on Elevate. All right, so we're going to follow this guide here. Drawing. Again, remember to that background section here. So for my guide, know where I'm going to. Keep elevation low. I took too slightly too much. There we go. Sasha saying, Venter is saying, very sexy, edger, edgy, modern mullet. Rocking it for sure after lockdown. Cool. Guys, send me your photos. I want to see it. <laughs> I really do. I really do. If you're on Instagram, uh, tag me, at Tim Duenas Hair. I would really love to see what you guys have done with this. All right, let's turn our... Oh, gosh, you straight ahead. All right, <laughs> All right let's turn here. Okay, so we're going to pivot that initial section there. So this can be done in about two to three sections, depending. So head tilts a little bit, giving me slightly more elevation. Using my underlying guide, three-quarter braid, blade off, three-quarter blade. Moving back, following around into that crown section there. So you can see also I'm kind of extending this line, right? So I'm not really coming all the way around, but I'm extending it. So it's kind of coming back and out this way. So extending this way. Next section, let's break this into two. Head tilt. Again, follow my guide from that front hairline. Three quarter. And you've got to kind of, with the razor, just remember where your stroke is, meaning how big was my stroke on the other side, and that's how you get your consistency. And it, it, it will start to become a muscle memory. Um, one of my mentors told me, just think of it as a metronome. So in your head, tick, 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 tick. If you have that beat, then that's the beat you're gonna use. Or the, uh, uh, yeah, there we go. Three quarter, working right the way through, looking for that darkness underneath. Right to the back here. I love the sound of a redraw there. There we go. Whole thing now is it has this interwoven shape. So even though there's a lot of disconnection here, everything just marries together. And this is the time when you can look and see what you would change about it or what you want to evolve. And you could do is you know you could wear you could, she could wear it back off of her face and really show off that disconnection and feel very extreme. Or she can wear it forward, a little bit of a flip here, feel very sexy. Right? And this is the point in the haircut where I, I look to see if I want to change anything, adjust anything, but I'm pretty happy. I'm going to take this down. Sculpt this a little bit here. There we go. I'm pretty happy with it overall. So let's just recap a couple minutes here. We worked our fringe section to start up here. It was taken, now it's all kind of married together, but it was taken uh, recession to recession here. Right there, recession to recession. It had a little divot here, a round section that round ran just above the round of the head, hit the corner of the head, came up over the base of the crown, and then continued on the other side. Each of the side panels, or the, we worked the fringe first with a closed blade, meaning small strokes all the way across, keeping a low elevation and some weight in there. Then we worked our underneath panels a little bit more of an open stroke, working it short to long, following the shape of the hair line there, keeping that disconnection. Then we went through, worked our back, short to long and up this way. First two sections over directed to each other, and then it worked around the side here, following the head shape, giving us this round shape. And then we came through the top, pivoting sections, starting from the bottom, working up till we reached a completely horizontal. That shape is short to long towards the back and we worked into our pre-existing crown section so this was our crown section from before and you can see it just seamlessly integrates into that because i used that as my guide as i came around and then the fringe you can see is a bit heavier here so it kind of comes up 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 flattens out a little bit flattens out a little bit and then right down and through cool boom thanks guys so much for watching. Uh, again, I'm Tim Duenas. 
at Tim Duenas here on Instagram, Quarantine Academy, noon most days, uh, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, Armco, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for hosting this. Hairbrand, you're incredible. Thank you for your continued support for everything that I've done in my career. And uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in and watching. Awesome.